What's up, man? How you doing? Hey. You alright? Mania include a failure to resist the impulses to steal items not needed for personal use nor for their monetary value. The items taken are either given away, returned, or kept and hidden. Often the person has enough money to pay for the stolen items. The person experiences an increased sense of tension immediately before committing the act and gratification or relief while committing it. Even though arrest isn't likely to occur immediately, the theft is not pre-planned and the possibility of being arrested in the future is not fully taken into account. There is no long-term planning and there is no assistance from others. The diagnosis is not made if the stealing is due to conduct disorder or antisocial personality disorder. Kleptomania is believed to affect two to three times more women than men. Studies suggest that 6% of the general population is affected by kleptomania. In patients who have histories of obsessive compulsive disorder, some studies suggest a 7% correlation with kleptomania. Other studies have reported a particularly high correlation of kleptomania in patients with bulimia, which is about 65%. Individuals with kleptomania suffer significant social and occupational impairment, a poor quality of life, and have high rates of attempted suicide. The complications that kleptomania may cause or be associated with include arrest, imprisonment, depression, alcohol abuse, substance abuse, eating disorders, anxiety, compulsive gambling or shopping, suicidal thoughts or behavior, and social, social isolation. Most individuals with kleptomania steal household goods followed by groceries. The least likely items they are going to steal are books and music. The majority of participants report stress and anxiety as being the cause of their stealing. The large majority of these individuals claim they resist the urge of stealing by thinking about getting caught. I'm here to talk about the history of kleptomania. Uh, the word kleptomania was first used in 1838 to describe kings that stole worthless items. In 1911, 
Wilhelm Steckel wrote an article saying that um, it was a woman's way of dealing with ungratified sexual instinct. And the act of stealing was actually in place of a forbidden sexual act. In the early 1900s, there was a rise in kleptomania with the birth of department stores. And during that time, it was thought to be linked to female sickness and hysteria associated with insanity and female pe pelvic disorder. In the DSM-4, it was kleptomania was categorized as an impulse control disorder. Cognitive behavioral therapy can be used to uh, treat kleptomania. Um, some strategies that are used are covert sensitization. Uh, this is where you have an individual imagine themselves stealing and then imagine the negative consequences of that action. Uh, also, systematic desensitization can be used. Uh, this is where you can get a client in a relaxed state and ask the client to imagine themselves in the different steps of the stealing process. And then to, while that is happening, uh, suggest that they could better control their urge to steal by first controlling their anxiety. Also, aversion therapy can be used, and this is when a client may use something that's uh, mildly painful or uncomfortable to uh, get through the urge of stealing. So someone may hold their breath until it's uncomfortable uh, to get rid of that urge to seal. Um, also, support groups uh, are very helpful uh, for those who have kleptomania um, so they can uh, learn from others and learn different uh, coping techniques from each other. 